Hey everybody, uh, John McGarrett here with another uh, quick tip, quick tips, tips, a little life coaching, a little life, whatever. I'm not, I'm no, I just want to start off by saying I'm, I'm no pro, I'm no professional, I'm no fancy pantsy, smanchy, uh, Elon Musk or Joe Rogan or uh, anybody super special, Jordan Peterson or uh, Christopher Hutchins or anybody really cool like that, but I want to try. Uh, I feel like I am here and somebody is here and I would like to help them get here. That's essentially the point of these videos. So here we go. Let's jump into it. This is uh, content creation strategies for creators smaller than me. So if you're like, essentially, you know, I'm a bare bones, uh, brand new newbie. And this is for you who is uh, sitting on the fence and not sure what to do first. So um, I have a saying that I just kind of coined. I was talking to my girlfriend about it a little bit, and essentially it is about, uh, essentially it goes like this. You, most YouTubers first experiences is that they, they have these high expectations from, uh, perceived a lot of effort being put into a video. They put a lot of effort into a video. They spend a lot of hours editing, filming, shooting, designing, writing, watching it over and over and over again looking up the analytics, looking up the keywords, the most popular SEO, the most popular this and that, the most, you know, the best they can do at their level. And then, you know, let's say 20, 30 hours into a video, they upload it and it doesn't perform very well. So then they have these high expectations because they, oh man, this, this feels good. I put a lot of work into it. And then it just comes crashing down, crashing down and it hurts. Okay. So that, you know, let's to, to, to keep, so to kind of mitigate that, to kind of avoid that, that's a little what this uh, video is about. And essentially, the strategies shouldn't be striving for excellent or perfect or anything along the lines of that. It should just be good for what I used to say at Walmart, good enough. <laughs> um, let's say, you know, you're going to be comparing yourself to the best when you when you start. You know, that's what I was doing, at least, is that I would try to like, I'm going to get on YouTube. So I have to be like the best, like the best. I don't I don't have to be the best, but I have to start being like the best. So you go out and you you, lo you watch your videos, you know, you have your favorite creators, but you go kind of what I did is I went out and I found creators that were doing one mil of view, uh, it pretty much like my 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 low my low bar for like what's a good creator and somebody I should try to emulate is uh, if they're doing one million of you or one million views of video on content consistently. So that'd be like, you know, like PewDiePie, Markiplier, etc. So then I'm trying to like look at their content and just see what they do and what type of production value they have. How's their lighting? What are they doing? Are they cracking jokes? What's their intro like? What's the hook? What's all this? And then, you know, I tried to emulate that and I had that experience. You know, I put the video out and it didn't really do much. And when I did finally start to get promoted because the YouTube algorithm changed to, uh, start to promote smaller creators a little bit more. They just kind of chuck you. They just kind of chuck you out there. You get all these, uh, I think like I got like uh, close to 600,000 impressions in a month on videos that it would only do a thousand views. But then I, then I started getting really into it. But anyway, um, the, the, the sobering things that I learned is that Joe Rogan has a team, Mr. Beast. He has a company, a huge, massive, amount of resources going into each of their videos. So how hard I tried to make one video, uh, all that effort and skill acquisition I did to try to learn DaVinci Resolve and then Adobe Premiere and all these other programs and tutorials and Photoshopping little techniques and stuff like that to add little skills to my uh, my little book, my little uh, my suitcase of skills, my skill bag. Um, they have employees who only do one of those things at the highest level in their field or whatever, a higher level than I will ever probably be able to achieve, uh, scatter, like going for different skill sets. So it realizing that I realized that the approach for making content for somebody at my level to really be sustainable and repeatable is to just make a product that's good enough. Um, set an expectation that is real. Uh, that would be my tip number two. Set an expectation that is real. Don't try to copy them. Uh, this mister, this beastification of the YouTube world is is the meta. It's the meta right now. You know what I mean? You you make a hot title. You make a hot thumbnail. People click the video. They have a hot hook, and then they kind of just if if they're like a uh, oh, I had a good analogy for this while I was talking to a coworker at work about it. It's it's pretty much the difference between 
Um, a guy who's trying to marry you and a guy who's trying to sleep with you. They both say the same thing. The only difference is one of them sticks around and the other one doesn't. And the beastification meta of the YouTube, you're seeing a lot of these like sleaze bags who are like just trying to hook you and they're not trying to like um they they set you with an expectation and then don't follow through. Um and that you know that's led to a lot of controversies and it's it's not really gone away. It's more of just shifted into a way that's like harder to really detect until you've already realized that um you've just wasted 20 minutes watching a video that had no real substance. Um <clears throat> You were waiting for hype to deliver, and it, the hype never delivered. It's not Mr. Beast. Everybody tries to be Mr. Beast, but they can't deliver. Or a lot of them can't. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, look at my notes. So what I mean by setting expectations, uh, just if you're honest, yeah, your, your videos aren't going to do as well. But we got to start somewhere. I, I think about Jeff Bezos and Amazon. He didn't start off with the company that he's got today with the vans flying around. And 20 minute shipping um, delivery, 13 second delivery from uh, Prime Now. Uh, that one joke. Anyway, sorry. Um, he started in his garage. I'm pretty sure he did a bookstore. That's not important. I, I know he started in his garage as a store like that. He focused on <clears throat> good enough. So if you, and he, he garnered a small audience doing that and he was able to turn a profit and then he started to scale up there. Um, so what I mean by setting expectations now that I've droned on for a little bit longer and I should have about that is that if you just simply set an expectation, somebody sees it and they click on it, they're going to watch the whole thing. And that's pretty much the whole YouTube meta right now. If you look at people and they're talking about, uh, what, 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 uh, analytics you need to look at, it's not about views, man. It's about retention. It's about retention. That's how the algorithm favors you. And it is true. Uh, the more videos I've had that have a longer retention, I've gotten more impressions on uh, noticeably. Uh, it is true, and also it does like that is true in a real market marketable way too. Because if you had ten fans that watched one hundred percent of your videos, liked one hundred percent of your videos, and then you presented them a product just to sell, like you're going to you'll probably be able to convert those viewers into sales or a Patreon or something along the lines of that, and then you would start to get money from them to then invest into yourself and then. Do something like Jeff Bezos or do something like Joe Rogan experience where they started off small, got a following, use that money to invest and then appeal to a mass audience because now maybe you can afford an editor. Not even that. Maybe I could afford a light instead of using my computer screen uh, to try to illuminate my face so my uh, webcam doesn't look like crap. Uh, but so so that's kind of it. If you set an expectation with your thumbnail, it is what it, you know, you see, you, you're going to get what you click on. You know what I mean? You're going to you're going to get more retention. Uh, and more impressions. Um, can't really speak through uh, CTR too much, click through rate, but though that is that is true. I believe that to be true. Let me check my notes. One thing else I can add to this because I'm coming in on ten minutes. Oh, right. So the leveling system. I think about it like maybe. Oh yeah, I've already kind of went over it, but essentially, think about it as leveling up. Uh, money is just. Never mind. Uh, let's cut that anyway. So that'd be about it. I hope that kind of is a good tip for you to kind of maybe like content strategy wise. Uh, just, just be where you're at, be where you're at, be on the level you're at. And if you can just be where you're at and do it well, eventually you'll be at the next step and then the next step and the next step, uh, gains come over a long period of time. If you look at any channel, they all will utter the same thing. And I'm going to utter a little bit of that too, just with a little extra nuance from earlier is that consistency is king. If you do something 100 times, if you want to chop a tree down and you only have time to hit it five times a day, but you go out there every single day and hit it five times, eventually that tree will fall down. It doesn't matter if it takes a hundred days or a thousand days. If your goal is to chop that tree down and you do the same thing every single day, which is an action that will move you towards that goal, you will eventually achieve it or you'll die. One of the two, you never know. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching. Anybody who's here, hope this helped anybody who was like looking for help or answers for somebody from a complete noob. Um, hopefully this gets you started off the fence. Just, just do it. Just make a video and then just fail. Uh, Mr. Beast's number one advice is that if you, um, if you don't know, like 
if you haven't made a hundred videos, make a hundred videos and then we'll talk uh, about like what you should do to make uh, better videos. So just fail, fail and then iteratively improve your product. Just like what I do, how I decide to do, you know, I'll make one video and then the next video I'll just go, what didn't I like about my last video? Because I'm not getting a lot of feedback from the viewers. So then I'll just go off for myself. What didn't I didn't like about the video? What's one thing I can do? And the last thing I didn't like about my last videos was I didn't like the lighting, the yellow light. So I try to white, um, I have a white, I took one of my monitors and I put like a big bright white uh, color there so that it would illuminate my face a little bit better. So again, goodbye everybody. Hope you have a good day. Hope this helps. If not, sorry. But if so, I'm glad. But uh, get off of the fence and start creating.